member statements. Member for Spadina, Fort York. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's, it's with regret that I, I rise to make my member statement today. Uh, two days ago, there was a terrible incident in which a man who appeared to be drunk confronted a family at the Jack Layton Ferry Terminal in my riding. The man repeatedly said, you don't tell me what to do in my province. He continued to move in and pushed the family and repeatedly repaired, re repeatedly said the words, in my province. I want to thank the family who was confronted in this abhorrent way. They moved their child to safety, called the police, and remained calm at the, at the man, as the man became louder and more belligerent. I understand the police are investigating. To the family, I want to offer my sincere apologies. The attitude demonstrated by the man who attacked them do not reflect the values of the people of this province. The strength of this province has been built on the diversity of the people who live here. Such intolerance and belligerence has no place in Ontario. To the men who behaved in such a shameful way, I say to you, this is not your province. This is our province. Your values are not the values of this province, and your behavior is unacceptable and embarrassing. Your intolerance and belligerence will not be tolerated. From the first welcome that was given to us by the First Nations people of this land, we have built a diverse and united community. Ontario's strength lies in celebrating and supporting the diversity of our backgrounds and welcoming each new generation of people who will come to call Ontario home. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Glengarry Prescott Russell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our communities at Glengarry Prescott Russell are wonderful to live, work, and raise a family. Our volunteers, our social clubs, our local enterprises, and our people are unique, which gives us an excellent quality of life. And Mr. Speaker, we now have the proof following the publication in the McLean's magazine of the best places to live in Canada and where to buy a house in their top 10. Glengarry Prescott Russell not only had one municipality but two, and one of them was in the first place. The municipality of Russell, where I sat as a municipal councillor before my election as MPP, and the municipality of La Nation were part of the top 10 in Canada. The other factors were the ease of uh, travel, the low crime rate, taxes, and even the weather. I'm so proud of my riding, and I'm encouraging my colleagues and all Ontarians to come and visit us and see themselves what we have to offer. Mr. Speaker, Ontario is open for business, and Glengarry Prescott Russell is proud and ready to pave the way. Statements? Member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to acknowledge we are on the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit River, Anishinaabek, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Huron Wendat peoples, and that my riding is on the traditional territory of the Ojibwe people of Fort William First Nation, signatories to the Robinson Tr Superior Treaty of 1860 and the Lac de Malac First Nation. The riding of Thunder Bay Atacokan is a beautiful and natural landscape and extremely and has extremely hardworking, generous and talented citizens. But like all ridings, we have had our troubled times. Racism is and needs to be addressed. And we are addressing it, Mr. Speaker, with determination, with many chances for open dialogue, education, art, and dedicated, committed leadership. When going door-to-door -door during the campaign, the number one issue was health care, wanting a hospital that is not in constant gridlock, access to doctors and other health care professionals, 
and much-needed mental health and addiction services. I hope that after four years in this Legislative Assembly, we can look back with pride at our behaviour in this chamber, at our progress for a better Ontario for all people, an Ontario where no one is left behind, and where justice, opportunity and kindness prevail. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Aurora, Oak Ridges, Richmond Hill. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I would like to uh, bring attention to a great cause that brings people together from all over the world, the Sri Chinmoy uh, One Nest Peace Run, founded in 1987 and traveled to over 150 nations and territories, the Peace Run does not seek to raise money or highlight any political cause. Rather, the Peace Run provides an opportunity for people to give expression to their own hopes and dreams for a more peaceful and harmonious world. The Run is a global torch relay that embodies humanity's universal aspiration for peace. Passing the torch from one person to the next unites us in hopes, dreams, and our common aspirations to offer something positive to the world. Mr. Speaker, the torch has been carried over 395,000 miles. Indonesia, Ireland, Sweden, Switzerland, Cambodia, Armenia, Australia are just some of the 150 countries that the torch has traveled to. I met the participants of this great initiative last weekend, and I invite everyone to get involved and take part in this great and symbolic activity. Also, Mr. Speaker, I would also like to bring everyone's attention to another great event taking place in the great town of Richmond Hill this weekend. The three-day outdoor Richmond Hill Rip Fest is taking place this weekend. Rip Fest features professional rip, team, rip teams traveling to Richmond Hill from all across North America. Rippers cook and compete for various best titles, including best sauce, best ribs, and decided by honorary judges. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Rip Fest is taking place at the Richmond Green Sports Centre and Park from Friday to Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to share with my colleagues today a bit about my home community in Regent Park and about some of the fantastic events that our community members are putting on throughout the summer. Regent Park has certainly gone through a significant number of changes in the past few years. It's no secret that we are living and breathing Canada's largest social development project. But there are things that haven't changed in Regent. The way our neighbours support each other, the sound of children playing on the playgrounds until late into the evening, and a vibrant community where there's always something to do. Throughout the summer, every Wednesday night, uh, we host both the Taste of Regent Park and the Regent Park Film Festival. Families pour out of the buildings and into the park where kids can make smoothies in a bicycle-powered blender, families can enjoy a pay-what-you-can community meal, or indulge in a special treat of the week baked in our very own uh, wood-fired community bake oven. Yeah, it is. Uh, last night, Council Fire Native Cultural Centre made us Indian tacos in the bake oven, and I have to tell you, Mr. Speaker, if you've never had an Indian taco, you're certainly missing out. Then after dinner, we gather under the stars and we enjoy the weekly film fest. Uh, next week is the animated film Coco, and I invite all of my, my colleagues uh, in the legislature uh, to pop on by. It's only a short uh, streetcar ride on the college car. Uh, so I'd like to thank and recognize the amazing community partners that put this event on, including uh, the Friends of Regent Park and uh, the Regent Park, Park Film Festival. Thank you. Statements. The member for Don Valley East. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I wanted to take a moment to uh, recognize an important program that's taking place uh, in my community uh, over the course of the summer, and it's called a Common Table Market. And it's located in Flemington Park, which is the neighborhood I grew up in, which is part of uh, the new Don Valley East. But before I do that, I just want to take an opportunity to thank the residents of Don Valley East for having confidence in me. Uh, by electing me, uh, this is the sixth time I was elected, three times as a trustee and three times as a uh, MPP, and I just want to say thank you uh, to the residents of Don Valley East. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this incredible initiative, uh, the Common Table Market, is a, an incredible project that's put on by the Flemington Park Ministry, and it's an effort to make sure that people in the community have access to healthy, nutritional food. 
Uh, there's over 170 families uh, that access this program that are registered, and I had the opportunity last week to join uh, many of the families as they came uh, to, uh, to choose different uh, vegetable choices and fruit choices and to, uh, to leave with a, a basket full of food so they can go home and share that with their family. You know, Mr. Speaker, it's important that families have access to uh, nutritional food, especially young people, um, as they're growing and as their brain's developing. It's, uh, it's important that they get nutritional, uh, dense uh, food uh, so they can reach their full potential. So I just want to say thank you on behalf of uh, all the residents of Don Valley East to the Flemington Park Ministry, its organizers, its donors, its volunteers, for everything they do to provide good access to good nutritional food in Don Valley East. Member statements. The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last weekend, on Friday, July 20th, and Saturday, July 21st, the beautiful riding of Cambridge hosted the 43rd annual Scottish Festival. You may remember, Mr. Speaker, that I mentioned this Scottish Festival in my inaugural speech last week. The Scottish Festival was first started in 1975 by Duncan McLaughlin. The games were an instant success and were initially held near the village of Ayr. In 1987, the games were moved to Churchill Park and have been, there, have been held there ever since. Last weekend, hundreds of people, including myself, enjoyed everything the festival had to offer. The drumming and piping competitions, learning about different clan families and clan alley, highland dance, and of course, uh, the heavy events, which included the caber toss and hammer throw. And there was, of course, scotch tasting, for those who are interested, and I will not say if I participated or not. <laughs> I would like to extend a thank you and congratulations to the Clan Chieftain Nathan McDonald and the Volunteer Board of Directors Duncan McLeod, Liz Cairns, Maris Leach, Liam Curtin, Chris Geese, Dave Howell, Alicia McLeod, Taffy McLeod, and Karen Clark, who put this amazing event together year after year and helped to keep Scottish heritage alive and well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Member statements, member for Niagara Falls. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank you for allow allowing me to rise today and talk about an incredible day we had on running the 83rd Prince of Wales Stakes last Tuesday in beautiful Fort Erie Racetrack. Our successes keep going, and this year we surpass expectations. Broadcast, broadcast live on TSN 1, 2, 3, and 5, and around the world. Tens of thousands of people watch Wonder Cadot won the big race, and Mark Cassie, one of the best trainers in the world, said that he loves the Fort Erie racetrack. In one day, we saw $1.9 million wagered, an increase of 34%, $77,000 in food and beverage sales. Of course, the biggest support always comes from the community. We had 15,000 spectators, and thousands of people watched the concert after the race. And this is a point that's important in this. The concert was incredible. As many as you know, it rained on Tuesday, so they took the concert that was going to be outside by the track indoors. They took it indoors, and what they did is they took it where the slots used to be. Thousands of people were inside where the slots were going to be, where they used to be. And what happened is everybody looked around, they said, why don't we have our slots here? Why is the slots not back in the 40 racetrack? The band's playing, everybody was dancing, including myself, by the way. I'm not going to, not, I'm not going to illustrate that now. But the important part here is it was promised by Premier Ford that the slots would come back to Fort Erie. And by doing that, we could create 250 jobs immediately and help the economy in Fort Erie. So I'm saying to the Conservatives, promise made, promise kept, bring the slots back to Fort Erie. Thank you very much. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Brampton South. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take this uh, opportunity to talk about a great initiative that happens in my riding uh, every year. Uh, this past weekend, uh, Hockey for Humanity hosted their annual ball hockey uh, tournament at South Fletcher's uh, Sportsplex. From July 20th to the 22nd, hockey players from across Ontario took part in this tournament. As one of the co-founders five years ago, um, I am proud to say that the Calsa Cup has quickly become one of the largest charity ball hockey tournaments in Ontario. A hockey for Humanity was founded on the principles uh, of selfless service uh, and service to the community. Uh, everyone 
Every year, all of the proceeds of the tournament uh, are donated to local charities. Uh, past year, we donated money to the Right to Play. We've also donated money uh, to charities like P President's Choice uh, Children's Charity, uh, as well as Kalsa 8. This year, the tournament uh, donated the port proceeds to Corkbrook, an organization that supports individuals and families with developmental disabilities. Their mission is to offer meaningful opportunities for the personal development uh, for individuals with varying levels of abilities. I'm very proud of all the organizers and the volunteers that put so much effort into making this tournament successful. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Barry Innisfil. Mr. Speaker. I wanted to uh, recognize Jeff Rutledge, who is with us today. Uh, he's uh, from uh, from Innisfil, from part of my riding. And I wanted to make a statement about Barry Rutledge, who does so much for his community. Whether it's helping with the annual Innisfil Pitchin' Day, where the community gathers together to clean up litter, or whether it's working to launch an interactive trail, or riding, riding around in the fabulous rotary train at local parades, Barry Rutledge is there. As a former uh, OPP officer, Barry and his wife, Lynn are always striving to make their community an even better place to live. And every so often he gets together with his former OPP colleagues and they go out for some beers and some wings. But most recently he had some bad uh, indigestion after going out for some beers and wings. And he thought nothing, uh, you know, nothing un unusual, you know, maybe wait a day or two, but the feeling came back after two days. And in his calm and collective fashion, he went to his wife Lynn and said, not feeling so great, can you take me to the hospital? Well, it's a good thing that they did go to the hospital because it turns out, as he suspected, he was having a heart attack, and with, within minutes of arrival to the hospital, it was confirmed. He was transferred to South Lake Hospital, where he was uh, given two stints for his recovery. And after that recovery, he did join the YMCA Healthy Hearts and joined a cardiovascular program in order to give him the strength that he needs to spend time with his newly born grandchild, who just turned 10 months uh, yesterday. So I just wanted to say, Mr. Speaker, everyone here, do take care of your cardiovascular help. Do what Barry Rutledge did and go to the YMCA. Make sure you take your heart health into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the time we have for member statements this afternoon.